do not be afraid of technology and do not be afraid of having a paradigm shift, whether it's AI or some other version of technology. Do not be afraid to think differently and learn about how you can use it to scale what you're doing and to do it in much less time. Mompreneurs, welcome back to the Good Enough Mompreneur podcast. I'm your host, Angela Mishuli. Thank you for joining me on this episode, which is the first after my summer break. So I am excited, I'm rested, I'm relaxed, and I cannot wait to bring you this interview or the many wonderful guest interviews that we have coming up. And I'm also going to be sprinkling in my own podcast episodes about my entrepreneurial experience and things that are coming up for me, including the release of my first course next month, Unlocking Your Mompreneur Potential. So look in the show notes for more information on that. But in today's episode, I talk with SEO, AI, and digital marketing expert, Dr. Brett Lane, about the ways that we can begin to utilize tools like ChatGPT and other AI to really maximize our sales and our impact, but also to 10x our time and really to think about all of those things differently and to learn to think about scaling what we're doing and using AI to do that. And it's so important that um, we begin to make those mindset shifts. Before I share that interview with you, I want to invite you to leave the podcast a review wherever you listen to podcasts. That means so much to me because I get to get feedback on what is resonating with you. And then too, it helps other mompreneurs find the podcast, which is so important. I get messages every week on the episodes that are impacting people and it means so much to me to be sure to subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts because you're not going to want to miss any of the interviews and episodes we have coming up they truly make a difference they make an impact we are all one mindset shift away from expansion and more growth in our lives and our businesses. So this podcast definitely aims to do that. And then number three, if you're loving this episode or any of the podcast episodes, be sure that you share them with your friends and family. So without further ado, here's my interview with AI, SEO, and digital marketing expert, Dr. Brett Lane. Oh, welcome to the podcast, Brett. Uh, it's a privilege to have such an expert on the podcast. Um, you're a digital marketing expert, uh, AI and SEO expert with more than two decades of experience, a doctorate in digital marketing. <laughs> you you have more than a thousand projects under your belt with top brands like G- John Deere, Fisher Price, Build a Bear, and Hallmark, and you've been required to put yourself in the mindset of mom. So not only is your experience important, but you know how to like think like we do. <laughs> um, so welcome to the podcast. Yes. <laughs> Thank you very much for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Absolutely. Um, I'm grateful to have a conversation with you. I'm sure we're going to learn a lot in this episode. I My conversation with you, I, I look look at being twofold. One, you have all of this amazing experience and expertise, but you really have an incredible story of resilience. So, um, and you had a TEDx talk that moved me and really resonated with me. And I'm sure, you know, many other people have watched it. So can you just talk about like your story and overcoming cancer and really how that impacted you? Absolutely. So it that I found out about that in 2019 towards the tail end of it. And my wife would kept 
getting on to me about like, Hey, your skin's looking a little weird, you know, different. And I was like thinking, I've, I've had molds and things forever. So mm-hmm. never really thought too much about it. And then typically when you think about skin cancer, it's, it's not something that seems like it's massive. Right. Um, but when you look into, into the number of people who start getting skin cancer that can potentially lead to other areas, it's, it starts to becoming much greater than most people know. Mm-hmm. Um, so I wound up going out and my wife continued to bring it to my attention. So I went and got checked out and then did skin grafts and then thought, Oh, I'm just going to get it cut out. I had already had this done three other times in my back. No big deal. Yeah. Um, and then we wound up getting checked and they looked for depth and they said that it was, the cancer was growing into my neck deeper than what they would have normally seen with regular skin cancer. And that it mm-hmm. looked, looked like it was going into one of my lymph nodes on my neck, which that was the thing that, that gave me the biggest amount of concern. Cause if it would have just been, on any other place, and it wasn't connected to my lymphatic system, which is the highway to the rest of your body, right. I wouldn't have been quite as worried. So there was this huge period of time where, you know, you're going through tests, I had to go out and get nuclear material injected into my neck, go through, um, you know, get a, a CAT scan and have to go through the process of waiting to see mm. how deep was it, did it impact everything? And then they didn't really know if it had gotten into my lymphatic system until surgery. So here I am waiting for surgery for months and then now you get into surgery and then you get to figure out, okay, how far did it go? How much did they take out? And they wound up taking out one of the lymph nodes on my, my right side of my neck. And then thank God I was lucky enough that it it hadn't quite made it to the lymphatic system, but they wanted to take out that lymph node. They needed to take out a section on my neck, the size of about a half dollar to make sure that there wasn't any margin of error. Um, Mm -hmm. And during that process, it just made me think about, you know, my life. It made me think about um, my journey, my family, my my kids, my wife, everything you can think about when, and here I am 40, um, 44 years of age thinking, Hey, what's, if this thing does get into my, if it had gotten into my system, I probably got maybe another six months to a year to live. Um, so I just had to spend a lot of time really wrestling with, who I am and and what my life is truly about. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I feel lucky to even have this conversation with you that you're here. (laughs) I mean, it's just what you went through and it was during the pandemic. I'm sure some of this unraveled and, and surgeries and recovery, and that just must've been incredibly difficult. Um, So hopefully you treat your wife extra special on (laughs) Mother's Day this year for sure. I mean, good thing you listened to her. I'm glad you did. Um, but some of the points in your TEDx talk that really resonated with me that I think my audience tends to get stuck. And I know I had this personal experience when I had to step back from my career and start up my businesses was not letting what you do define you. And um, can you just talk about that for a minute? Because I think that that is so important and can really hold us up from expansion, mm-hmm. our identity, how we see us ourselves. Yeah, I think it's huge. I mean, it, like if you're talking, about, regardless of it's if it's for men, for women, we all get sure. caught up in what we're doing, and that becomes this huge part of your identity. And when you run into those moments in life where your identity is challenged, like if it's all about your career and you work for such and such company, then let's say you get fired. You're going to have this major paradigm shift in your mind as to who you are, what you do, what your value is to yourself. Um, you, it could be career-wise. It could be any aspect. It could be just in marriage. You know, you might be married to the wrong person who you should have never gotten married to, and then things don't work out. Okay, worst case, it just doesn't work out. And then you get wrapped up in this mindset of I'm this husband or wife married to this person or now I'm just a dad, or I'm whatever I am. Um, I think if people put themselves in those kinds of boxes, it makes it harder when you have bad things happen to you to have a paradigm shift, as they say. So Mm -hmm. I always tell people, you can keep your mindset focused on like who you are as a human being and knowing that you're this complex organism that has multifacets to what you are and who you are and, and what you believe. The, the more we can go back to the, those kinds of roots, it makes it easier when something shakes the very, very core of your nature. And then you're not stuck with, oh, I'm just a digital marketer. I'm just a, I'm just a dad. I'm just a mom. I'm just a whatever you add in 
to I'm just a, it makes it easier to not get stuck in that mindset. Right. For sure. And let's say we move past that mindset, then we need to start thinking about taking some risks, right? (laughs) And creating new neural pathways. And that's so important. So can you just talk for a minute about your, your vision on that? Because I thought that that was really important. Yeah, it's amazing when you start thinking about just taking action and how if you take action, even in the midst of not having the right mindset or feeling how that can start to change your brain. And I just noticed with myself, the the more when things get harder, I just keep going through it, going through it, saying, hey, how do I get through this day and get to the next one? And I've had, you know, during COVID, I've had lots of moments like that. In the last 20 years, I've generated millions upon millions of dollars for big brands, as well as for myself. And COVID was one of those times that it, I mean, it, it hit me and my team extremely hard. You know, in a matter of three years, I watched a million dollars disappear in business that, and it wasn't a result of not performing well. Mm -hmm. So there's that risk of any person, you know, where you're, you're getting to a point where you're doing that you're selling millions, you're at the height. And then all of a sudden something like COVID hits and then you're like, Oh crap, I just lost a million dollars. Did it kill me? No, it didn't kill me. But I still had to look at that moment and say, hey, those loss of clients or the revenue that came in because people were pausing their marketing because they were afraid of what was going on in the community or in the, in, in our world, uh, they decided to pause their marketing. So mm-hmm. you know, for me, it was just a moment where I had to say, hey, this is just one part of one business that you run, focus harder, get through it, and then replace that revenue or get new revenue based off of you know existing or new services. So a lot of it is just, having the mindset to continue to move forward rather than saying, because I don't know many, you know, of, of my friends from when I was in high school or college, who, if I were to say, Hey, you just lost a million dollars this year. Like, how are you going to take that? A lot of them are going to, they're going to want to jump off a bridge or do something crazy. Um, You, you got to put yourself in that mindset of, you know what? Things happen. There's successes. And I have no problems talking with people about the success successes of my life, as well as things that happen where, whether it be a failure for something that I created mm-hmm. or it be a, not really a failure, but like a, a roadblock to me, mm-hmm. COVID was just a roadblock. It was a million dollar roadblock, but that's okay. I got through mm-hmm. it. Um, you know, now we're moving on to much better things than prior to COVID. Right. For sure. And it's like every day you show up in business, you you're giving yourself permission to fail. Right. I mean, you don't have that safety net. You're it. (laughs) And somebody might see that as a limitation, but it's also an opportunity for great growth and wealth as much as, you know, losses at times. So I, I think that whole story is just something we all can learn from to be more resilient for sure. Um, so let's talk about your digital marketing, marketing experience, you know, talk about Dr. Digital and, um, because in what's so important about digital marketing, because especially as new business owners, we tend to, wear all the hats and do all the things. And then I also like to emphasize, like, regardless of what you have help with, you need to know certain basics and fundamentals (laughs) for sure. Um, Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So So, how'd you get into it? So I have been studying digital marketing for a number of years, and it seemed like every, every five to seven years, I get a little bit more bored with What's out there? What can I learn? How can I push myself to the, the n- another limit? And in 2004, I had gotten my MBA in internet marketing. And there had been, a um, obviously, between 2004 and 2022, uh, or 23 is a good amount of time. So I'm just in between that time, I was picking up new things in terms of strategies for digital marketing as a whole, and then being able to apply the learnings. And, you know, he talked about COVID. And in COVID, I think during all this time when I have cancer in my neck and I have all these different things going on, I went and decided to take a digital um, marketing certification through Harvard. And Mm -hmm. I took, you know, I went through that program. I got to present to the the team our findings. We wound up doing a digital marketing experiment, if you will, on a local business to see if we could throw different types of marketing. So I was able to help the team 
create an entire digital marketing structure and strategy for that business. And I mm -hmm. chosen out of the team to present to the professor at Harvard, passed it, got the certification. I did that one. And then as soon as that one was over with, you know, as if I didn't have enough things to do, I decided to get a, a digital marketing certifi certificate through Oxford University. And that wound up taking me another six weeks. We wound up creating another plan as it related to um, digital marketing for a different kind of business. And then I, after I got done with that, I said, you know what? I really like all the information we put together from these two certifications. Mm -hmm. And then I wound up looking to see if there were any opportunities online from a, from a doctorate standpoint in what I do. And I couldn't find anything. Mm -hmm. you know, I searched for over a year and I wound up finding one program that was in the United States and it was two years. I found another program that was in Switzerland. That was one year. It was an accelerated program. So I, I typically tend to get a little bit impatient with things. So I said, you know what? I'm going to do the program in Switzerland. It's one year, 52 credits. I'm going to get this thing banged out. And I wound up writing my dissertation on utilizing multiple forms of marketing to where you could get traffic from tons of different places and then generate it from a, where you, where it's extremely cost effective. Mm -hmm. So it's more like an om omni-channel marketing strategy mm -hmm. where you're taking things from all kinds of different platforms. You're trimming the fat, as they say, with with wasted spend and figuring out what gets you the most traffic at the lowest amount of cost with the highest amount of conversions. And 120 pages later, I was finished with my dissertation on that main topic. It was a crazy ride. That's what kind of led me to deciding to go and get my doctorate in digital marketing. If we could only do like a download, <laughs> right? <laughs> that would be amazing. Um, but for anybody listening, who's like, not, not sure they might have a concept of what digital marketing is. Can you just do a little summary of like what digital marketing encompasses? It really depends on um, what you're promoting, where, what you're in, what uh, industry you're in, because digital marketing can re it can relate to tons of things in tons of industries. So let's say you're you're a mompreneur and you're running a business that is dealing with to toys for kids or reviews for products or anything of that nature. Mm -hmm. You know, for you, digital marketing could mean doing things on Pinterest, on TikTok, on Twitter, on YouTube, uh, maybe Facebook or Instagram, and really just as a medium. Uh, that gets you in front of other consumers where mm -hmm. you can interact with them. Um, mm -hmm. So some people think LinkedIn, uh, you can only use LinkedIn and other places if it's B2B. I mean, you can still put information out on all platforms. What I tell people mm -hmm. is create content that can go on as many platforms as possible. And if mm -hmm. you, you know, most people think, oh, TikTok, I'm not going to get anything from TikTok. Maybe it's, it, it is a, for a, a lot of younger users, but you just never mm -hmm. know who's on the platform could be a person who is an executive who's on Instagram in the bathtub late at night consuming content. They happen to see something about your particular product, service, or skill set. Mm -hmm. You know, creating content in those in different platforms. Mm -hmm. um, digital marketing could be a huge component. One thing that I'm seeing working really well is we talked a few minutes ago about videos and taking long form content. People are doing podcast interviews. They're doing training sessions. Mm -hmm. You know, we're using artificial intelligence to figure out what questions are being asked online by consumers in relation to any type of uh, product. And I tell people, mm -hmm. you could literally take AI like GPT-4, pay $20 mm -hmm. a month, you have access to the highest level um, artificial intelligence as it relates to text, figure out who, what kind of content do you create? Case in point, I have a customer that does um, sells products that are related to curcumin, and it is water-soluble curcumin. It's a phenomenal product. Mm -hmm. So I, he was talking to a doctor. He said, hey, I'd like to do an interview. What kind of questions can I ask this? I told the, the AI, hey, write me 21 questions that are, that are written to a doctor in relation to curcumin based on all the health benefits to a person for taking these products. And within three minutes, I had a list of 21 questions that could be asked. The doctor mm -hmm. then came or the, my, my, my client then came to the doctor, did a Zoom call, asked all the questions. And then got themselves the footage. We took that footage and cut it up into 21 separate videos with separate thumbnails. We went into used AI to rewrite, to create brand new titles, descriptions based on the transcript. I was able to tell the AI, read the transcript and come up with a, a very good, catchy title. Come up with a, a thousand word article based on the transcription of that video. Come up with the tags. Come up with a, a posting strategy. And then we were able to... to create a 21 part series for the the doctor 
They spent one hour and did a Zoom call. For them, marketing was long-form content in, in form of videos, and mm -hmm. they had a social media team. And I said, hey, why don't we take and create a ton of content that's video, that's engaging, that's long-form content into short form and push it everywhere. And it, it worked extremely well for that for that that company. Mm-hmm. That's incredible. Um, so it sounds like would blog articles also be included in digital media or digital marketing? Would you say? Yeah, I mean, okay. if you're looking if I, that with the strategy I just mentioned, yeah, let's say you were doing, you do a, you go use AI mm -hmm. to come up with a thirty part series about how mompreneurs can hit different levels of success in their life based on what are those top thirty characteristics. And I use the AI mm -hmm. to come up with thirty topics. Mm -hmm. And you can use that AI to come up with 30 transcripts that you can then use to do 30 videos, 30 training yeah. sessions, take each one of those videos, you transcribe them all, and then you take and tell the AI, hey, I need you to create a new article based on the transcript, and then you do X, Y, and Z, and now you've got yourself a 1,000 to 15-word article of content that's based on what you said in your video that you can then put on your website. You can then take it, and you can put the, the article on um, as a description in your YouTube video, you, you can repurpose this content again and again. But the key thing is specifically with AI is making sure that that content is in your voice. You know, right. you did, you use the AI to create the the headlines, you created your outlines, your script, and then it came out of your ver your words. Mm -hmm. Then you told the AI, take my words and turn it into an article about the things that we talked about in my particular video. So you can see how the AI took things full circle. Mm hmm from idea to content creation. Right. So what I think is really important to talk about is being intentional and purposeful with the content and how we share it and how we create it. And I think, tell me if you agree, an integral part of that is SEO. So can you talk about what SEO is if there's somebody listening who doesn't know and just the important role of SEO in creating content? Yeah, SEO in, in its purest form is just creating content in a way that gets search engines to recognize what you're talking about. So mm -hmm. we talked about videos and things, turning video content into text-based content, mm -hmm. getting that on your website, making sure that Google can communicate with your website and get an idea. It's like a book. If mm -hmm. you open a book and there is no, you can't, you know, you can't see what, well, what's this book about? Mm -hmm. You know, there's no table of contents. I have no context as to what it's about. It just leads into a story. SEO is very similar in terms of structuring your content and your site to reflect what people search for, giving them the content that they need as easily as possible and getting your communications with Google. So basically things like making sure that your website is really fast, making sure mm -hmm. that people can browse it very quickly on a mobile phone, on a desktop, mm -hmm. making sure that Google and other search engines can hit different pages and, and um, get the information. And the cool part about SEO right now is I'd say in 20 years, we are at a point where there's so much information about what it is. It's way easier to do. You know, you can go to Google and type in mm -hmm. what is SEO for my website. Give me a strategy of the top 50 things to do with SEO. You could even use AI to do it that because it's going to collect that information. Okay, now I know I need to get my title tags done. My descriptions for each page need to be on point. My marketing copy needs to reflect. I have to have different heading tags within that content. Um, so there's more information than there ever has been. And when I started, mm -hmm. I was having to do things where I was testing on my own assets. Mm -hmm. You know, what does it make more sense to write title tags this way, descriptions this way, marketing copy that's 400 words, 100 words, 300 words. Um, now we don't really have that. It's There's best practices. And you literally could take AI. I love this. You could go to Google's best practices for content. You mm -hmm. could go to, to um, OpenAI's um, Playground, which is is the same thing as Chat, chat GPT. Um, mm -hmm. It's just another, another aspect of their tools. You can literally go in and say, please review these details for content. Okay. Now the, the tool goes in and reviews it and then gets an understanding. And then you could say, here's my content from my webpage. Copy, paste it, put it into the tool. Can you tell me things that I need to do to make my content better to fit that? Then it gives you a list. Then you could take the tool and say, okay, I've now given you what I need to do. I've given you my content. Can you take my content and rewrite it in a way that is adhering to Google's best practices for content? And by the way, can you create an additional 500 words of content for me? Boom, click a button. Now the tool is going to take and it 
took the source, mm -hmm. which was Google. It took your source of content and it's creating new content that fits what Google is saying you should do. That is the easiest form of SEO like on the planet. Anyone can do this. And it's like I said, $20 yeah, yeah. a month with OpenAI's platform through GPT-4. Um, 3.5 is good, but it's, it's faster, but it's not as the, the information that it provides is not, in my opinion, it's not as good in terms of being robust content. Mm -hmm. Well, we talked about neuroplasticity, about mindset. I feel like we need to create neuro, new neuro pathways on how we approach marketing, honestly, from all of like my mind is blown because we just accept that it has to be hard and we just have an explosion of tools that can make it so much easier and just put things at our fingertips. So as we approach, you know, trying to market our businesses, how do we build a strategy that's mm -hmm. effective? The big biggest part from what I see is being able to scale yourself. So any mm -hmm. person who's working as a one person team, a solopreneur, um, who's looking to grow their business, you have to scale your business in a way that is cost effective. So mm -hmm. I tell people, you, you at the beginning of any business, you have to have a lot of sweat equity, and you have to be the one who does a lot of work for not a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And then as you grow, 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 in my opinion, it makes sense to find somebody, you know, you can find a virtual assistant in the U.S., out of the U.S. I work with a company um, that does small elements of things for campaigns. The company is called VA Locator. Very, very good team. They're in Colombia. I needed a, a person to go out and, and help me with my videos. Mm -hmm. So now I heard, hired a person less than $1,500 a month. And I've got 160 hours of their time every month. Hmm. I can go out and take videos. And so the reason I say I talk about VA locator is the fact that you're able to scale your time. Every time I take on a new person, I say to a business owner, let's say you could scale and give yourself 160 extra hours per month. It's going to cost you, let's say, $1,400. Mm -hmm. It's not a, not a high price, um, but now you're getting an extra 160 hours in the month. You could literally tell yourself, you can even use AI. Hey, I'm a, a person selling this particular product. Can you help me create a strategy? that says something related to social media. Literally, you can take the strategy, you can create, as I mentioned, the, the topics for 30 things to talk about in a month. You can, you can come up with information for text, ideas for videos, you do the videos. You can use tools to go and take that information and disseminate it, you know, like planable.com is another tool that you can use to plan out your social media. Now you give this, these, this content to a VA and say, okay, I just did these videos. I need you to go in and use these tools to go out and, and go out and, and change it and tweak it. Um, and there's a lot of different video tools. You know, we, you and I were talking about Opus um, Clicks. Um, there's tools like that where you can go out and take content and put it in long form videos to short term, short, short form videos. And now you're giving that to your VA and you're saying, I want to train you and how to, or you can train yourself with these tools. Now you have a person who is acting like an army on your behalf creating mm -hmm. content in, in terms of text-based content. Um, you can go on and now, now you're like, okay, I've got to create, I took one video and I need to take that video and turn it into content to submit to five places. Mm -hmm. Now you take the video and you say, here's 30 different topics that I wrote about. Tell the mm -hmm. AI, I need you to come up with 30 different posts specific to Instagram with all the hashtags and everything. Now the tool takes the post topics you gave it, creates you 30 different posts for Instagram, then you do the same thing for Twitter, you do the same thing for Facebook, you do the same thing for TikTok. So now you're you're the kick. The kicker is being able to scale your time. So there's mm -hmm. the paradigm shift with AI and usage and and you know dangers and things. I tell people use the tools to 10x your time. If you hire somebody to do the work with you, like a VA, they can become proficient in the tools. You don't have to. You just have to go out and do the the video interviews, or if you're just if you, want, you don't want to do that much in terms of output on yourself, you literally could have your VA interview. You come up with the 30 questions, 60 questions, let's say. 60 questions, they go on an interview, They you get on Zoom, they ask you the questions, you answer them each in one minute. Now you have about, it's going to take you about 75 minutes to do that if because there's a little bit of time before and after. Now you've got 60 micro videos that can be used on Instagram, you know, TikTok, YouTube Shorts, and then now you're giving your team all that content to tweak. Now you have two months worth of posts. And that was mm -hmm. if you're only to do it once a day. I would say you should probably do it two to three times a day. You know, you took 
third, and if you think about the scalability of this, you take your, you go out and you create, let's say 30 videos. And then those 30 videos are posted out to five places. It's 150 mm -hmm. submissions in a month. Mm -hmm. And then let's say you were to do that twice a month. Now you got mm -hmm. 300 submissions. You're doing 10 submissions a day across five different sites. And now you have 300 posts a month. So you, people either can do that strategy and they can either, you know, like, hey, they want to spread it across a, a six month period. Awesome. Do it mm -hmm. for three months and spread it over six months. Or you get crazy and say, I'm going to just flood the Internet with information. <laughs> and you do three, four. I mean, that's one hour of your, of your time a month. <clears throat> Who can't get on Zoom and <clears throat> one hour answering 60 questions? I mean, if, right. you, if you don't have the time to invest in that, you shouldn't be doing anything with Internet marketing. Because mm. whatever you're going to do is going to fail because you're not investing in yourself and you're not willing, like I mentioned with a VA, invest in yourself to have somebody double your output. Mm -hmm. The only other thing you have to do is more hours yourself, which saves you money and it takes you twice as long. So the big mm -hmm. thing is hitting critical mass with what you're doing with the tools. And AI is a phenomenal tool to make that happen. It sure is. And it just, I mean, we just really need to rethink uh, how we approach and not just using our content in one way, but multiple ways, like you mentioned, long form, short form articles, all of these things. And I think we have a tendency to, to not think expansively about what we're creating, but let's say somebody's just starting out. Is there any strategy on what platform might be the most successful? I think there's a danger in trying to do too much at once. Um, I don't know. Do you have any opinion on that? I think if you're using tools correctly, you, you shouldn't hit burnout. You shouldn't have to spend any more time than needed. And by that, I mean, you know, like we mentioned different platforms, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, Twitter, those are four basic platforms that you can do where you can create content. And then you have your blog. That's your fifth component. Mm -hmm. The cool part is it's creating the content in a way that makes it re repurposeful. So mm -hmm. you can go out and take the videos and take the videos and turn them into text. Take mm -hmm. the text, put it on the website. Take the audio from the videos and use it for podcast sites. Mm -hmm. You know, now, you, now you've got blog posts. You can take snippets of the content from the video, turn into text for Twitter, for mm -hmm. Instagram, for Facebook. Mm -hmm. And the key, the kicker is find out where your audience spends the most time and then start doing your content for that audience in mm -hmm. that platform mm -hmm. and then scale it. And gotcha. if, if you do it that way, you, I, I believe you'll get the greatest amount of return because now you're focusing on where your particular audience spends the most of their time. But mm -hmm. then you're also saying, Hey, maybe it's Pinterest and it's, is YouTube. That's the two platforms. But I know that there mm -hmm. are some people on um, Instagram and Facebook that could still benefit. So if you're using tools like Planable and you're syndicating the content out, now you can hit all four platforms and it's not like you're going to spend a significant amount of more time mm -hmm. posting content to all four versus one. It's mm -hmm. not that big of a deal. You're adding like maybe 10% of 15% you know, time to the activities by creating a, a post for YouTube and it gets created for Twitter, for TikTok and for Instagram. Mm hmm so what is the return on investment of creating all of this content? What are some of the results that some of your clients have seen for creating all of the, the content? And how do we measure what we're doing is the right thing? <laughs> how do we measure when we're, we're doing good? <laughs> I think the biggest thing is, in my opinion, is brand amplification. Mm -hmm. And that can be defined as, by, it's defined differently by different companies because if you are in obscurity with your brand mm -hmm. and all of a sudden now you're creating 150 new posts a month, mm -hmm. 300 posts a month, and you're being found on every single platform in relation to every single thing you do, then you know you're doing it right. So for mm -hmm. instance, you know, for myself, I, mm -hmm. I go to different networking events and I use AI to hone my message to where it's optimized for search. It's optimized for each platform. And I'll have people who, you know, I had one of my friends come to me I, just two days ago and he said, Brett, you know, you're in my feed all the time. What are you <laughs> doing? And I said, well, I'm just creating the content in a way that is, is engaging and it is unique to, in his, his case, he spends a lot of time on Instagram. And so mm -hmm. I'm doing more Instagram reels and they're usually, they're, it's a, the content is being cut into like maybe uh, 40 second intervals. 
-hmm. And I told them, I'm feeding the machine correctly. So, so in my case, I'm not trying to get sales. I'm trying to get brand awareness for my, you know, Dr. Digital brand. Mm -hmm. And I want to get, I want to have as many podcast interviews to spread the message about AI with digital marketing. Mm -hmm. Some businesses, it could be, hey, I, I want to increase, you know, my sales. So you can track within Google's analytics where your sales are coming from, specifically through social mm -hmm. media, through Google you start setting up goals to see how many sales that I acquire from social media. What's the, what has happened in the last 90 days? Have I seen an improvement? Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes it could be, Hey, I'm looking to get on, like in your case, you, I might be looking for different kinds of guests, more guests. Mm -hmm. I'm looking for sponsorship opportunities. Mm -hmm. And and then all of a sudden now, after 90 days, you have so much brand awareness that, you know, Fisher mm -hmm. prices would say, Hey, um, you, you're connecting with all these, these, these mompreneurs. Mm -hmm. and we have products that we want to test. I mentioned earlier uh, on a, a private conversation that when I was working with Fisher Price, we wanted to find out tactics to utilize to get in front of moms. Mm -hmm. So we looked at mom bloggers and created a strategy to target mom bloggers to have parties that in, dealt with new toys that Fisher Price was taking care of, um, that was creating to be used mm -hmm. on Twitter and on, on uh, Facebook. Mm -hmm. And for them, mm -hmm. their ROI was how many women could we get to host these parties? Could we take over Twitter? We took mm -hmm. over some, a variety of hashtags in a period of like seven days. It was insane. Mm -hmm. uh, so for, 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 for Fisher Price, it was brand awareness within mm -hmm. social media. Was the sentiment increasing month over month, positive versus being you know normal? Mm -hmm. um, so really for you, it just depends. Like if your goal is to get more people to sign up for your, you know, your podcast or your newsletter or to get sales, it's really going to depend on what you're looking to achieve. Mm -hmm. And then I, I would say though, with social media specifically and mm -hmm. SEO, the, the, the game plan is longer. And, I, and here I am too. I'm pushing out. I've got over a hundred videos on my YouTube channel in terms of long and short form content. I did that in less than five months. Mm -hmm. And it, my goal was just brand awareness and exposure in my channel. So it's like, Hey, when I talk to anybody about getting on a podcast and doing an interview like this one, mm -hmm. um, I wanted them to be able to say, hey, what is it? What is he doing with his channel? Can we go out and how is he going to help my specific initiative? And why would it make sense to even have this this guy with this really cool hat <laughs> on my podcast? I like your signature hat. Yeah. I mean, myself, when I learned how to podcast, there was this constant message like, you don't need a website. You don't need that. Just podcast. And I kept thinking like, I want to do more than podcast. And I put a website together and within a matter of, I don't even know if it was a week, I was the number one mompreneur podcast. Like that SEO and that I mean, it just skyrocketed. My inbox was flooded with people who wanted to be on the show and you know, so there is, re this is really important stuff. If, if it's not on somebody's radar, like, please understand how important it is. Um, so yes, it is, you know, and there are things that can result of getting that traction and putting out that content that you can't even imagine, you know, who mm -hmm. may see your content and want to engage with you. And, and, um, there are a host of opportunities out there. Um, so you talked about Google Analytics a little bit. Um, is there anything that you think that we should really focus on when it comes to Google Analytics or any like social media um, performance? I know you do a lot with YouTube. I, I think there are particulars with each of them. Um, you don't have to get too granular, but you know, I'm just curious if somebody is wanting to focus on one platform or another you know, what should they be doing? Yeah, I mean, if you're looking at general traffic within that's coming to your site, and you're looking at your Google Analytics, looking at how many pages are they visiting, who, mm -hmm. how many people are visiting, how long are they staying on the site? Because mm -hmm. that's a big factor for Google is engagement. Mm -hmm. You know, if they're bouncing from page to page and they're sucking in all of your information, this is really good. Mm -hmm. And how to get it to increase. And so mm -hmm. increasing the content, making sure that your content is more engaging, putting videos on your site. That's what I was telling you, video content is beautiful because now you can have that video on as blog posts. You mm -hmm. can, you know, people used to do like the transcriptions of the videos for content. I would say 
you can do the transcriptions or you can create new content that reflects the transcriptions with AI. There's no extra work done. Hmm. So now you have, you know, you're, you're able to create more content and you get people who are engaging at a greater rate. Um, time on site is huge with Google, mm-hmm. you know, and you're looking at, so I was mentioning that those are some things mm-hmm. you want to look at from, a, mm-hmm. from, from Google analytics. And then how much traffic is coming from each platform? Are there mm-hmm. particular pages of the site that are getting more traffic? Mm-hmm. Are there particular platforms, you know, where you're getting more traffic and then the same things, mm-hmm. how many people are coming from YouTube and what, what's their engagement with my site? Should I have mm-hmm. more pages? I'm going to assume that you'll have more engagement with a page on your site that has an article or content that reflects the transcription versus the transcription itself. Mm-hmm. Because you're really only feeding Google content if it's a transcription. But if you're feeding the person, let's say you told you you had a piece of content that said like, if you don't want to go through the whole video, there's an article that was written based on the video below. You can go mm-hmm. in and look at things in snackable bite-sized pieces. Mm-hmm. Now you're hitting people who may not want to watch the video, maybe want to just skim through the text because they're like, oh, she mentioned one tool. All I care about is this tool Angela mentioned about, you know, for videos and they can go click it. They find it. They have what they want. They're not going to forget you, mm-hmm. even though you gave them a bite-sized piece of content and they might mm-hmm. not have been a site for a tremendous amount of time, but mm-hmm. doing that gives them what they need. And mm-hmm. Google is still going to see, oh, there's engagement on the site. Mm-hmm. So in, in the platforms, it really depends, as I mentioned earlier, what platform makes the most sense for your audience. Um, but mm-hmm. the reason you look at analytics is to figure out what the engagement looks like across the site. Mm-hmm. And you know, maybe you're saying, oh, I'm getting a lot of people from Twitter. Mm-hmm. TikTok may, may, my audience isn't on TikTok, but for whatever reason, you look at your analytics and you mm-hmm. see, well, they're visiting pages two to one versus Instagram. Mm-hmm. And they're on the site twice as long. Why, why is that? Okay, well, maybe they're engaging mm-hmm. with, with your content better. So now maybe you should start spending more time on TikTok. Mm-hmm. because people are consuming your content at a greater rate. Mm-hmm. So, you, so you can use analytics to figure out where people are going, why they're doing it, and mm-hmm. where you could create content that would reflect what they're looking for at a much greater mm-hmm. rate. Yeah, I know you've talked a lot about AI, but are there sources that we can use in addition to ChatGPT or um, some of the other things out there? that can help us focus our marketing and get the SEO that really helps us target our market? You could. And as actually a tool that I've been experimenting with just this last week is called Harpa. Mm-hmm. Um, Harpa AI, harpa.ai, H-A-R-P-A.ai. What I like about the tool is it's a Google Chrome plugin mm-hmm. and it does utilize GPT-4, which is great, mm-hmm. but it also, you can use this tool. You can tell it, hey, go to this article and figure out why it's ranking, figure out how, what keywords are going after, figure out how I can create my own keyword strategy. And hmm. it, it's very cool because it fits, you know, you basically hit um, control A on your computer and mm-hmm. on when you're browsing and it pops up a window mm-hmm. and you just kind of guide it through. Like today I created a strategy. I said, okay, I need to create a piece of content about an exotic car rental company in Los Angeles. Mm-hmm. Here's exotic car rentals, create a new list of keywords. It created a list. I need to create now an outline for content based on those 10 keywords. It did that. Mm -hmm. I need you to take the outline, create an article based on this very detailed outline. Mm -hmm. It did that. I was able to tell the tool, hey, I need you to create it and write it from a luxury standpoint because these are people who are wanting to rent, you know, um, Rolls Royces. Um, Or I need it to be funny or creative because we're talking about Lamborghinis or Ferraris. Mm -hmm. And then the tool was able to, to tweak and change and we were able to create new content. I think I wrote like 1,500 words, and it took me less than 10 minutes of really good content that's very different. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that having that, even that free tool in your arsenal and you're paying mm-hmm. that $20 a month for the GPT-4 really mm-hmm. helps out because you know you can use the AI to ask it about creating strategies for any platform that you need to. Hey, write me a strategy for Instagram. And talk as if you are a strategist, um, a mom blogger, that's looking for X, Y, and Z. You feed it, you get, now you got a whole strategy. Um, and then you can take Harpa and you can analyze your competitors and say, hey, this person ranks for top mom blogger or top mom blog podcast or whatever. Pull it, you figure out every keyword that that person is targeting on that page and mm-hmm. how to create a new piece of content based on the existing content with added heading tags mm-hmm. and with expansions 
of phrases. Just that one tool, just only one strategy that this, that, that tool has hundreds of prompts that you can use. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So how can we use that information in combination with something like Google trends? Is Google trends even worth like looking at or utilizing, or is it AI is where it's at now? <laughs> I, think, I think using a variety of tools makes a lot of sense. Google trends mm -hmm. is one. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people use um, semrush.com. Mm -hmm. It's another good basic tool. You can look at it mm -hmm. for content ideas. I mean, I would look at Google trends and come up with anything that could be trending in relation to what your competitors are doing or what's hot in your industry. Mm -hmm. And then take that data and feed it into something like Harpa mm -hmm. and then create, you know, complex strategies. Um, mm -hmm. the one thing I would say too, is it, what, regardless of the tool you use Harpa um, in and of itself or GT4 or any other tools, you have to feed it more information and give a prompt that is very, very robust. Mm -hmm. This is who I am. I'm a, you know, an entrepreneur that has 20 years of experience that's writing in a uh, professional tone to a group of women who are between the ages of 30 and 55 who have kids who do this, 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 this massive prompts. And the, what you're going to get back from it is really, really good. Mm -hmm. um, and that was one of the main reasons why I wanted to focus on GPT-4 for the, this conversation, mm -hmm. just because if you don't have a strategy related to social media, you can ask these tools, create a strategy for social media for someone in my particular space. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now I got a whole strategy. Now can you create micro strategies for where my audience is? And you mm -hmm. create those. I create it with videos and you just keep building and building and building. And then you hire a VA, invest in yourself, mm -hmm. double your time for the month, mm -hmm. teach them to use the content that you're creating with the specific tools mm -hmm. and then have them take your message and push that message out to the far reaches of the internet. So mm -hmm. that was the main reason why I wanted to talk about AI, because I feel like right. your audience can get the most right. out of these tools, regardless of what level they're at in terms of their career. Um, they can use it in their career to make themselves look better to short the time that it takes to go from working at a job to then being an entrepreneur and thinking like a business person versus mm -hmm. thinking like an employee. Mm -hmm. so many different directions you can take this it's it's insane yeah and i think you know i don't think that there's a parent out there who says yeah i've got lots of time <laughs> you know we're among the people who have the least amount of time and need to be purposeful about maximizing um our efforts and you know scaling what we can do in as little time as possible mm -hmm, so absolutely. So how uh, I asked you, uh, what were some of the tools that we can use to find for SEO? So how do we, how do we stay on top of like what's happening, what, the trends? <laughs> Cause it seems like things are really shifting and moving quickly. There's just been a huge explosion, which I think is going to take a big mindset shift on how easy things are beginning to be. So how do mm -hmm. we stay on top of that? <laughs> I spend a lot of time on YouTube. I'll mm -hmm. watch you know, videos about, you know, I keep talking about AI and different things of that nature, but for whatever reason, in my particular industry, I just find I subscribe to a ton of different channels and I get new updates about, because there's, you know, people are really wanting to stay on top of it as it relates to AI. So I hear about all these new tools, mm -hmm. all these different ways you can use it for strategy. Mm -hmm. um, for me, that, that seems to be one of the places that, where I just go and consume a ton of information. Mm -hmm. um, and and it, it might be your favorite blogger um, who you can emulate. You know, I would say mm -hmm. any business that you're in, you find the top five people in your industry and then mm -hmm. you, you train AI to figure out how they talk, why they talk, who they're talking to, what is their audience made up of? Mm -hmm. How do you create content that reflects everything they're doing? And then how do you amplify your own brand mm -hmm. in relation to what they're doing, but you make it better? Mm -hmm. um, so the, where you're going and how you're consuming and what you're consuming really depends on your journey and what medium is used the most for me, for whatever reason, it's YouTube. I can't, I don't find, I find some stuff on Instagram, but not as much mm -hmm. um, I might make the videos posted to Instagram that were on YouTube. Mm -hmm. So now I just go straight to YouTube and I consume as much video content as I can get my hands on. Yeah. And YouTube is a little more search friendly. Um, you know, it's like more like a search engine. 
um, than something like Instagram. Um, I feel like I just need to process all this information. I mean, you've just given us so many tools, so much good stuff. I mean, I appreciate your time. I'm grateful for just learning a small bit of what you have to (laughs) share with us. I appreciate it so much. So where can listeners connect with you? And um, if there's any information that you put out there that they can learn from too, where can they find that? So I put a lot of my content now on Instagram. Um, Mm -hmm. My handle is Dr. Digital. So if you Mm -hmm. look up or Dr. Brett S. Lane, you'll mm-hmm. find it'll take you to, to my channel. You can mm-hmm. find information. Same thing on YouTube, but, mm-hmm. but Dr. Brett S. Lane, mm-hmm. and you'll get as much information. And if you want to learn more about SEO specifically, mm-hmm. um, our company is seooutsourcing.com. Very, very mm-hmm. easy. Um, all things we're putting, we're putting together more content as it relates to AI, since things are changing and growing so much, but mm-hmm. you know, heavy focus on SEO content creation, ways that you can get the uh, algorithms to recognize you. So that's my biggest push with AI is how do I learn how to get things to do? So one of my friends said, Brett, I keep seeing all your content and I'm on Instagram. I'm thinking, okay, well, we're using AI in a way that makes sure that my stuff pops up in his feed. So mm-hmm. it's doing what I needed to do. So for me, that was an instant validation of, okay, you're doing what's needed to be found. Mm-hmm. So if anybody had one takeaway from this podcast interview, what do you want them to take away? The biggest thing would be, do not be afraid of technology and do not be afraid of having a paradigm shift, whether it's AI or some other version of technology. Do not be afraid to think differently and learn about how you can use it to scale what you're doing Mm -hmm. and to do it in much less time. Mm-hmm. I have people who I work with, writers specifically, who are just deathly afraid of these new tools because it's going to put them out of business. And I'm telling them, no, now there are hybrid approaches to writing content. Mm-hmm. The human beings are using it to create content faster. And now mm-hmm. they don't have to have as much brain damage when it comes to like writer's block. <laughs> now they know, hey, here's, here's what I need to write about. Let's get through this as fast as possible. So don't be afraid. Mm-hmm. Don't get caught up in trying every tool under the sun. That's what I do. Mm-hmm. And it's challenging to stay ahead. So find mm-hmm. a tool that works really well, mm-hmm. perfect the tool, and then find ways of making your work much faster and much easier by using these tools. And don't be afraid to learn new things because as we get older, mm-hmm. and it's 46 next month. And I'm like, man, I want to be when I'm in my 80s, have the same aptitude for learning that I do right now. And I know I've, 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 I've succeeded in whatever I've done. Right. No, we can get very caught up in, in just assuming things are going to be difficult. And I try to tell people if something might be difficult, but just in the beginning, you adapt to it, you learn new processes and we, we just think everything's got to be hard and it doesn't, we have all these new tools that can help us out for sure. Well, I appreciate your time immensely. And thank you so much for being on the podcast. It's my pleasure. Thanks for having me. Thank you again to Dr. Brett Lane for sharing his expertise and his knowledge in this episode. I'm so grateful that I have the platform to talk to guests who are so generous with not only their time, but with all of their knowledge to share with you to grow your business and to have greater impact, and also make things easier. I have started using AI more in my businesses, and it has made an incredible impact, not only on the results that I'm seeing, but more importantly, honestly, to me, the mental load impact where I am not feeling this consistent pressure to come up with ideas and strategies on my own, as a solopreneur and it really has been incredible and my conversation with Dr. Lane helped open that possibility so I hope and please let me know if you are going to start implementing AI in your businesses and let me know how that's going and let me know what impacts that's having on your business. I'd love to hear about it because it it really has been um something that I'm so glad that I had the opportunity to incorporate and, you know, just let it be easy. 
let it be easy and it helps to um, give you the opportunity to do more of the creative things instead of thinking about strategy and it really just frees you up mentally on a whole new level to have the assistance to utilize chat gpt and other ai in your business so um, i will have all that contract information all the tools that we mentioned i will link in the show notes so be sure to check it out and then of course again please leave us a review if you love this episode i'd love to hear about it be sure you subscribe. I have some incredible interviews coming up. You don't want to miss any of them. And then as always, please share this episode with anyone. Is there somebody who's struggling to market their business? I'm sure you know somebody who is in this episode could make an impact on them. So be sure to share this episode. It's very easy. Wherever you listen to podcasts, you can find a link, text it to somebody. And then I'm going to leave all of my contact information in the show notes, but check out my website at mombusinesscoach.com. Check out the links to my course that is releasing next month. I'd love to have you as a student and then have an amazing week. I'm so rooting for you. There is an entire community rooting for you being a mom, being an entrepreneur, especially many of my clients are online entrepreneurs. It can feel so lonely. So this podcast is intended to support you and create a community so you feel more supported, less alone. We're all applauding for you. So have an incredible week and I can't wait to talk to you again next week. Thank you so much for listening. Bye. Bye.